Hello and welcome to Kangaroo English. I'm Christian and this is the IELTS Academic Exam Speaking Preparation class. For me, this is the most exciting part of the IELTS exam because languages are for communication and most of our communication is verbal communication speaking. So I think it's the most important. But it's probably also the part of the exam that is the most scary for people because there is nowhere to hide. You don't have any time to think um, and it's very intimidating as you're one-on-one -on -one with an examiner. But in this class I'm going to give you some techniques that will help you to get the maximum possible score in the exam. So how can you improve your speaking? Well, the only way to improve your speaking is to speak a lot. So there are two important things, okay? when you want to practice your speaking. One is that you must find a person to speak to who has a good level of English, but also is going to correct you. Okay? There's no point talking to somebody who is not going to correct your mistakes. You may as well talk to the wall. Okay? And the second thing is that when you find this person, when you're in class with them or when you're in a cafe having a coffee and they're correcting you, you must listen. If you are concentrating too much on what you are talking about, then you're not going to learn anything. Okay? Stop, listen. When they correct you, stop. Ask questions. Why is it wrong? Okay? Now, most ordinary people don't have the patience or the technical ability to, number one, correct you, and number two, to tell you why what you're saying is wrong. So that's why sometimes it's best to practice with an English teacher. Okay? So, find a good partner to speak to, um, practice a lot, and listen, and this is the way that you can improve your speaking. So now let's look at some specific techniques for the IELTS exam. Okay, so first let's look at the format of the exam. So, it's from 11 to 14 minutes, okay, between 11 and 14 minutes, depending on how long you talk, okay, and it consists of three parts. So the first part is some short questions, okay? The second part is talking about a familiar subject. And this lasts for approximately two minutes, okay? So you, you need, you're expected to talk for two minutes, okay? On your own, monologue, okay? And then we have a structured discussion, okay? Between you and the examiner. So all of this together will be about 11 to 14 minutes. So... Now, how um, do they decide whether you're a band three or a band eight? Okay, let's have a look at the assessment criteria. Okay, so these are the criteria that Cambridge use to assess your, your band, okay, in the, in the exam, okay? So the first one is fluency and coherence. So fluency. Um, does your English flow like this, okay? Or do you have lots of pauses and fillers? Mm, uh, do you have to think a lot, okay, before you can make sentences? This is your fluency. And your coherence, can I understand you? Um, what you're saying, does it make sense to me? The second one is the lexical resource. So basically your, your vocabulary. So, do you have to repeat the same words a lot because you have a limited vocabulary? Or are you very expressive and you know lots of um, uh, synonyms or uh, other words that, that make your English speaking more interesting? Your grammatical range and accuracy. So, can you create complex structures? Like, can you combine, you know, the third uh, conditional um, with the past perfect? Um, and when you use these structures, is it correct? Do you conjugate your verbs correctly within the structures? And the final part is, of course, is your um, pronunciation. So, you know, can I understand you? Is it difficult for me to understand you? Is your pronunciation consistent? Or sometimes you say one word this way and then this word another, the, the, another way, okay? So these are the criteria that they use to decide whether you're band eight or band three. So. Now, I'm going to give you some tips for the IELTS exam. Okay, so my first tip, as always, is very simple. Follow the instructions, okay? If the examiner asks you to uh, a question about something, talk about that thing. Talk about unrelated subjects, okay? 
If the examiner asks you to look at a picture and describe a picture, describe the picture, okay? Don't talk about other things. Follow the instructions. If the examiner says stop or, you know, uh, speak more, then do exactly what he says, okay? You can easily lose marks by simply not following the instructions. Don't be stupid. Okay, so my next tip is don't give short answers, okay? If the examiner asks you, where do you live? Don't say, Spain, okay? This, the exam is your opportunity to show your English, okay? To show whether you're a band three or a band eight. So take every opportunity to speak as much as possible within your capabilities. So you could say where, in what part of your country that you live. Um, you know, is it in the north, is, is it in the east? Are there any interesting features around? Is it next to a lake? Um, is it uh, beside some, some mountains, okay? Give some, some extra information with your answers, okay? Let the examiner say, okay, stop, thank you. My next tip is to slow down, okay? Some people, when they um, are in an exam and they feel the pressure, they actually speak faster than they normally would. But you'll find that a native speaker, when they have to give a presentation or go to a job interview, they normally speak slower than they would, okay? You need to do the same thing, okay? If slowing down has lots of advantages. Number one, it gives you more time to think about what you're saying. Two, it gives you an opportunity to give a better pronunciation and to speak clearly, okay? So slow down, be calm, speak clearly, and you will move up a band. My next tip is to use the preparation time, okay? In, in part two, you are given one minute to um, look at the information given to you and to think about your answer, okay? Don't start speaking after 10 seconds. Use the minute, okay, to think about what you're going to talk about. Now, you can take notes if you like, but personally, I think it's distracting when you're speaking to somebody and then you're trying to look at your notes and then maybe you're panicking because you can't find your place on the notes, okay? But just use the minute to think. Think about your vocabulary, okay? And also, you can practice some techniques, some fillers, to give you more time to speak when somebody asks you a question, okay? More about this in the, in the speaking masterclass. So my next tip is very easy, really. It's tell the truth. So it's true that in the exam, your opinions are not being graded. You know, if you think Hitler was fantastic, you can still be banned nine, okay? It doesn't matter, your opinions are not important. And I have seen some teachers uh, tell their students, in the exam, say whatever you want, just, you know, it doesn't matter. But I think this is crazy, okay? Telling the truth is, has a lot of advantages, okay? Number one, if you're telling the truth, you have all of your brain capacity available to help you speak better English. If you are inventing stories, half of your brain is trying to invent the story and the other half is thinking of your English, okay? Tell the truth. The second advantage is that you can use stories, okay, from, from your real true experiences to help you to speak more. For example, if you love pizza, okay, and you went to a fantastic restaurant last night to eat pizza, then you can tell that story in the exam if the examiner asks you about your favorite food. But if you say, I hate pizza, then now you can't tell the story about going to the restaurant. Don't, don't be afraid. For example, if in the exam they show you, um, you know, um, a picture of two types of houses and they say, which house would you prefer to live in? but you hate this house and you hate this house, you can say, I hate both of these houses. No problems, okay? Telling the truth is fantastic. So my next tip relates to the day of the exam. So some people who are true uh, multilinguals or, or, or bilinguals can um, switch between languages really easily. This is called code switching. Um, but most people, um, probably like myself, uh, it takes them time to, to get into another language, to start thinking in another language. So on the day of the exam, the best thing is to be completely in, in English mode. So when you wake up in the morning, um, 
read the news in English. Um, when you're traveling to the exam, you know, maybe you can read a book in English or listen to some English music, um, form all of your thoughts in English. And when you're waiting to go into the exam, okay, try to only speak in English with, with your fellow um, candidates. And this will help you when you sit down to, to do the speaking. Um, you will already be switched into English and it will give you a, a big advantage. Okay, so my final tip is this, okay? Do not memorize um, speaking for the exam because number one, the examiner will know when you're using memorized text, okay? They're not stupid. They see hundreds of thousands of candidates and they know when you're memorizing things, okay? Um, so that's one reason, because they will penalize you. You will get a lower mark. And the second reason is it doesn't help you because in the exam, the questions can be about anything. And if you are trying to use a memorized answer, you have to adjust the answer and um, it's more difficult, okay? Use the time, instead of memorizing answers, use the time to improve your English, really, okay? If, if you have to memorize answers, then you're not ready for this exam, okay? Um, you shouldn't try to cheat in the exam. Go back to class, learn English for real, and, and you, will feel, <laughs> you will be a much happier person. <laughs> Okay, so they are some techniques you can use to improve your score in the IELTS exam. So don't forget to watch our speaking masterclass. The link is here, okay? And also, if you would like to see any more videos about grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, etc., don't forget to subscribe to Kangaroo English. Thank you very much. I'll see you in class.